Okay. Now, we are going to talk about the variance of sums of random variables. Suppose now, we are given two random variables, x and y, and we would like to calculate the variance of the sum of two random variables. Now, in expectation, the expected value of x plus y was equal to the sum of individual expectations. However, for the variance case, it is not going to work like that. So variance of the sum of two random variables is equal to variance of the first random variable plus the variance of the second random variable plus two times the covariance of x and y. And the proof for that is given here. So let's calculate the variance of x plus y. How do you calculate it? By calculating the expected value of x plus y square and subtract the square of the expected value of x plus y. Now, I am just going to expand x plus y square as x square plus y square plus 2xy. And expected value of x plus y can be rewritten as the sum of marginal expectations. And then we take the square of them. And that becomes the expected value of the first component, x square, plus the expected value of y square, plus two times expected value of x times y, minus, so there's a minus sign here, everything will be subtracted, the square of expected value of x, minus square root of expected value of y, minus two times expected value of x times expected value of y. And that is going to be, if you check the first term here, and the fourth term, we will have expected value of x square minus square of the expectation, which is going to be equal to the variance of x. And if you see the second term and the fifth term, we have expected value of y square minus square of the expected value of y, which is going to be equal to the variance of y. And if you check the third and the sixth term, it is going to be two times expected value of x y minus expected value of x times expected value of y, which is going to be two times covariance x, y, and that is going to be equal to variance of x plus variance of y plus two times covariance x, y. So variance of x plus y is equal to two times covariance of x, y. I'm sorry, the, in the sum of individual variances plus two times covariance x, y. Okay, so actually, I'm sorry for I have lost focus, variance of the sum of two random variables is equal to the sum of individual variances plus two times the covariance x, y. Now, if x and y are independent, of course, because the covariance is going to be equal to zero, the variance of the sum will be equal to the sum of the variances. Okay, so when two random variables are independent, you can say that the variance of the sum is also equal to the sum of the variance. But this is just an exceptional case. Remember now, the original formulation is this. This is the true formulation. But when x and y are independent, you know that the covariance is going to be equal to zero. Therefore, variance of x plus y is going to be equal to the sum of individual variances. Now, what happens, what happens if I generalize that variance of the sum to more than two random variables. So what is the variance of x1 plus x2 plus x3, so on and so forth. So say we have a sequence of random variables. They may be dependent or independent. It doesn't matter. We are trying to develop a general formula here. Now, if we have two random variables, we know that we need to add up the two times covariance of these two random variables to the sum of individual variances. But what happens if you do that for n random variables? Now, for that, you need to sum up the individual variances plus for all the combinations between all within these n random variables. So for all dual combinations, you need to multiply the covariance between different random variables with two. Now, Maybe it may be a little hard to understand this formulation. So let me explain this to you in an Excel file. OK, so please, I will request your patience. OK, I am going to open an Excel file now. 
And in the Excel file, it is very easy to explain this, basically. OK. Now. So if I have X and Y here, if I have X and Y here, so. I am just going to draw you a table. OK, if I have X and Y here, here, this cell belongs to the covariance of X and X. OK. So the covariance of X with itself and this cell belongs to the covariance between Y and Y. This cell belongs to the covariance between X and Y. And this cell belongs to the covariance between Y and X. OK, so we have four different covariances here. If you sum these four covariances, if you sum these four covariances, then you are going to get the covariance of the sum because you know what? That covariance here of X with itself is equal to the variance of X, right? And that covariance is equal to variance of Y. And you see the covariance of XY and the covariance of YX are the same things. Therefore, my formulation becomes, my formulation becomes variance of X plus variance of Y plus two times the covariance of X and Y. Okay. So this is the variance of the sum of two random variables. Now I am going to explain this for more than two random variables. So let's just say that we have X1, X2, X3, Xn here, so and so forth. So we have n random variables. We have x1, x2, x3 here in the name of the columns again up to xn. OK, now I am going to create the same table which is called the variance covariance matrix. So you are going to learn about this in maybe future courses. This matrix is called the variance covariance matrix of a sequence of random variables. And here is going to be the covariance between X1 and X1, which is going to be variance of X1. Here in this cell, we will have variance of X2. Here we will have variance of X3. So it will go like this. And here we will have variance of Xn. OK, so the diagonal diagonal elements of this uh, matrix are the variances. OK, here we have the variance, not the variance, covariance between X2 and X1, OK? And here we have the covariance between X1 and X2, which are the same, right? So these are the same. Similarly, we will have the covariance of X1 and X3 here, which is going to be the same in this cell, the covariance between X3 and X1. And in this cell, we will have the covariance between X2 and X3. And we will have the same value as in this cell. Here will be covariance between X1 and Xn. So let me copy this. X2 and X3. And let me copy these values and paste the transpose of them here. And we will have three dots here, three dots here, three dots here, like that. Actually, these dots should be vertical, but I'm not going to be able to write the vertical dots here. OK. So you see this matrix gives us the variance covariance matrix and the summation of all these cells will give us the sum of will give us the uh, variance of the sum of these random variables. So. If you want to calculate variance of X1 plus X2 plus blah, 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 plus Xn, then that variance is going to be equal to the sum of these components. So you first basically sum the diagonal elements. So these yellow cells. Then you are going to sum these green cells, which is at the upper triangular part, upper triangular part of this matrix. You do not need to add up these, let me say, blue cells. Instead, I mean, instead of adding up the blue cells, because we know that the green cells are the same as the blue cells, we are going to multiply these green cells with two 
and we are not going to add up the blue cells. So the summation of these cells is basically, according to my presentation file, the sum of the individual variances in the diagonal elements times two times the upper triangular covariance values. So as you see, I changes from one to N minus one. So I here, I changes from one to N minus one. And for every I value, J changes from, J changes from I plus one to N. So when I is equal to one, J changes from two to N. When I is equal to two, J changes from three to N. So we are calculating these covariances here and sum them up and multiply them with two. So for all two combinations, we calculate the covariance between every distinct random variables in the sequence and multiply that value with two and add up. Now let us solve question number eight. So remember, in question four, we have computed the variance of random variable X. So let me show that to you. Question four. So in this question four, we have calculated the covariance of X and Y. And the expected value of X was 1.75 and expected value of Y was 1.8. And the covariance was equal to 0 0.15. And in another question here, we have computed the variance of X and variance of Y as 0 0.6875 and 2.76, and the correlation was equal to 0 0.1089. Now we all know these values. Here we have another question. So we have these X and Y random variables with the respective variances and the covariance question asks me, calculate the variance of the sum of these random variables. Now we know that these two random variables are not independent. Therefore, the variance of the sum is not going to be just equal to the sum of the variances. We need to add up two times the covariance term. Now that we have already calculated the variance of X and variance of Y and the covariance of X and Y in the previous questions, we can simply say that the variance of X plus Y is 0 0.6875 plus 2.76 plus 2 times 0 0.15. So the covariance is multiplied by 2 and added, which is going to be 3.7475. Now, that is the variance of X plus Y. Now I am going to solve the second part. What is the variance of X minus Y? What is the my variance of x minus y? And if here you do not see a summation, but you know subtraction is a kind of summation, right? So variance of x minus y is actually variance of x plus minus y. So actually here, when you write minus y, you are basically writing down a coefficient for y, which is minus one. Actually, the sign between these two components is a plus. Only the coefficient of y is minus one. Therefore, variance of x minus y is also equal to variance of x plus variance of minus y plus two times the covariance of x and minus y. So here, when you write x minus y, actually you do not have y, you have minus y in place of y. And the variance of minus y is going to be equal to minus one square variance y because every co coefficient inside the variance, every multiplier inside the variance gets out of the variance by squaring it. However, the coefficients inside the covariance as multipliers gets out of the covariance without any change. So that is going to be the variance of x plus variance of y. However, minus two covariance of x and y. So for negative sign between x and y, is we have the variance of the x plus variance of y minus two times covariance x, y, which is going to be 3.4475, which is 0 0.30 less than the previous value. Finally, we are going to compute the variance of 3x minus 2y. And for that, we will say that Variance of 3x minus 2y is also equal to variance of 3x plus minus 2y. 
And that happens to be equal to variance of 3x plus variance of minus 2y plus 2 times the covariance between 3x and minus 2y. Similarly, both these 3 and minus 2 values gets out of the variances, respective variances by squaring them. But that 3 and minus 2 in front of the covariance gets out of the covariance without any change. And the first term will be 9 times 0 0.6875. The second term will be 4 times 2.76. And the third term will be minus 12 times 0 0.15. And the variance of 3x minus 2y can be computed as 15.4275 as well. So basically, we are using everything that we have learned in this course almost in this lecture in this question.